If I put Charizard on the thumbnail of this video, how many people do you think will click on it just to point out that Charizard technically isn't a dragon? And also, should that make me want to do it more or less? Mm. I mean, at this point, you've clicked on the video. You know what I ended up deciding. But anyway, Venomized Dragons is a video that I've had in my back pocket ready to go for ages now, and I just needed an excuse to actually make it. I mean, some of the most popular videos on this channel have been dragon videos and venomizing videos, so putting the two together, it's just a perfect fit. So why now? Is it because it's August and a lot of people are doing the smogest art challenge, so I should be drawing more dragons this month? Is it because I finally came up with a framing device for this video that I kind of liked? Or is it because views are kind of down right now, even though I did like four videos last week and venomizing stuff and dragon stuff tend to bring views back up? Well, to be totally honest, it's a combination of all of those things. By the way, if you want to help with the views things, leaving likes always helps YouTube push out videos more. But anyway, in today's video, I'm going to take a bunch of pop culture dragons and give them symbiotes from the Marvel Universe. And I wrote a little story slash lore thing, taking some inspiration from my own universes. It's kind of weird, but it's fun and goofy, and I think it worked well for the purposes of this video. So I hope you all have as much fun watching it as I had making it, and let's dive right into the start of the story lore thing and the first drawing with a Game of Thrones dragon. Let's go! For each of the various universes in the multiverse, there is an overseer charged with protecting and guiding their universe through all its stages of existence. Many overseers are responsible, decisive, and honorable beings who do their duty with great pride and dignity. Astra is very, very much not like that. Her universe had been a mess for a while, and once the main life-bearing planet became overrun with a pandemic, she finally just bailed on it and left to spend her days in the Everyverse. This was a dimension specifically made for overseers to experiment with forms of life before introducing them into their own universes. Astra spent her days here just messing around with whatever came to mind. She'd go to another universe, make soulless copies of that realm's creatures or beings, and meld them with creatures from other universes, just to see what would happen. On the day we find her, she was doing a very specific experiment. She'd made copies of symbiotes from Universe M616 and wanted to see what would happen if she bonded them with dragons from some of her favorite universes. The first dragon she set her eyes on was named Drogo by its since-deceased owner. Astra had been obsessed with that dragon's universe and spent much of her time there just watching over the various most interesting humans of that realm. But... After a while, she found her favorite mortals had started making strange, brash decisions and going crazy for no reason, so she'd lost interest and hadn't returned for a while. But now she'd gone back once more to make a copy of Drogo. Then, back in the Everyverse, she set her first symbiote loose on the beast and watched. The dragon tried to burn the symbiote off as it spread across the creature's body, but Astra had anticipated this and altered the symbiote's energy makeup to be impervious to flames. The symbiote eventually coated fully over the dragon and they became completely bonded. After much observation, Astra saw that the dragon was stronger, faster, and even more aggressive, all of which was expected from bonding with a symbiote. It had also been given the ability to breathe in space from the symbiote, making its flight limits far lessened. It could also now use large tendrils that formed from its skin to wrap around prey, so if its talons weren't large enough to grab its meal, these tendrils could help, allowing the dragon to carry massive creatures high into the air before dropping them to their death. Overall, Astra was fairly satisfied with the experiment, but there were far more dragons that she wanted to see bonded with symbiotes. Now, I knew I was going to use a Game of Thrones dragon for this episode because that's just one of my favorite classic-looking dragon designs. It's just like a really spiky, textured wyvern. They're really cool, I love their proportions, and 
Really, my drawing here kinda just looks like I was drawing one normally with just some slight extra venom elements like the eyes, I changed the horns a little bit, some stuff with the frills on the back. I was kind of more focused on texturing than design with this one because these dragons just have so much more texture to them because they're characters from a live action series, whereas every other dragon I'm working with today is from an animated show or movie or comic or whatever. So while I do really like how this one turns out, I'm gonna make sure in the follow-up drawings to think a little bit more about the venom elements to the characters or the symbiote elements to the characters. But as I said, overall still very happy with this one. Next, Astro went to a universe that was watched over by a much more forgiving overseer. It was a world with many, many more dragons to choose from. There was one specific breed she was most interested in, referred to by locals as the Night Fury. There were very few still in existence at this point, so far as she knew, but one was all she needed to make her copy. She released it in a similar geological location in the Everyverse to where it had lived in its own universe, then set another symbiote loose. The two bonded relatively quickly and it soon became clear that Astra had created an incredible super dragon. To be fair, the Night Fury had been an incredibly powerful being before bonding with a symbiote, especially for a dragon of its small stature, but now it was even greater. The Night Fury's front arm claws had been significantly lengthened and strengthened. It now used dive bomb attacks and could slash full grown whales in half with a single swipe. On one occasion, it had even attacked a creature on land and the slash that it used had been so powerful that it sliced a nearby boulder in half. The symbiote Night Fury also never needed to land. As the dragon would sleep, the symbiote would flap the creature's wings every few minutes to sustain flight. This meant there were far few chances that a predator would attack it while it was at rest. The final interesting observation Astra made was that the Night Fury's teeth now never retracted as they did before. It always had its mouth agape, with razor-like teeth constantly present, serving as a threat to any potential predator. This experiment was a great success, but Astra's interest was only piqued that much more by the success. She needed to try another dragon. Now Toothless was the dragon that I knew even when I thought up this video ages ago that I was definitely going to have to do. And I've thought about doing more How to Train Your Dragon stuff on this channel. I don't think I've drawn any of the characters from it before, but obviously there's a lot of good creative fuel in that movie series slash TV show series. I've never watched any of the shows, but I love the movies. To try and make this design a little bit more Venom-y, I added some more white and textured streaks to the character, added more spikes both to the shoulders and accentuated the spikes on the back, obviously made the tongue a little bit longer, and as I said in the lore, I gave him much bigger front claws and just made those a lot more symbiote Venom-y looking. I also have more venomy tendrils going around the character as if it's still finishing getting coded by the symbiote. I didn't want to lean into that right away because a lot of the time when I do venom drawings, I go straight for a character kind of pulling stuff off of them. I'll probably do that later in this video, but I didn't want to jump to it right away. It does seem to be a bit trickier to make dragons more venomy because a lot of dragons already have spikes and teeth and long tongues and stuff. But regardless, I do think this looks like a cool altered version of Toothless, and I hope y'all like it too. Here you go. Now as I mentioned in my Overwatch Dragons video from a few days ago, you can find tons of my dragon posters and just other general artwork turned into posters on my Teespring store. I'll put the link to the full store at the top of the description of this video, so you can go check it out. Got tons and tons of artwork up there now that you can buy if you want some of my stuff up on your wall or something. Also, while I'm doing shameless plugs, if you're not subscribed to this channel already, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified when videos come out on Fridays and Mondays. If you've watched this far, you probably like what this channel's about, so why not see more? Anyway, back into it. Let's get on to Shenron.
The next universe that Astra wanted to get into was one she'd visited before because of its abundance of fascinating dragons. It had some of her favorite creatures like the American Shielded Wyvern and the Sparking Dreku, but sadly she couldn't get back there to copy any of them. Unfortunately for her, she'd been banned by that dimension's overseer, because the last time she'd visited, she set loose a robotic organism on the world, and it had taken the form of a dragon without the overseer knowing, and stayed there for months. She knew if she tried to get in, she'd be sent away immediately after arriving, but just to stick it to that realm's overseer, she popped into that dimension for a quick, instant, hurled the symbiote down to the planet, then left again before she could be detected. Who knows what that symbiote ended up doing there. Instead of using something from that dimension, she went to a world where a godly dragon could be summoned to grant wishes to anyone who would spend the time to hunt down some glowing orbs. Astra was too lazy to hunt them down herself, but from her time observing the beings of this world, she knew a way to make someone else summon the dragon for her. She found this one specific bald guy with some dots on his forehead, and when nobody was looking, she killed him. It sounds a bit dark, but as expected, the man's friends did as they'd done too many times before, gathered up all of the dragon balls and used them to wish him back to life. To do this, the dragon was summoned, and Astra took the opportunity to make her copy of Shenron. Back in the Everyverse, Astra gave this dragon a different kind of symbiote, just to see what would happen. This ended up being a very, very bad call. Astra gave Shenron the sadistic Carnage symbiote, and he began killing every living being in the Everyverse. Shenron had incredible magical powers to grant wishes on top of being a massive flying beast, and now he was using all of that power with the added strength from the symbiote to torment anything in sight. He also started using his magic to duplicate his own symbiote on a massive scale and hurling them out into the world onto the other creatures of the Everyverse. Astra knew that if this got too widespread, then other overseers would start to notice that the Everyverse was getting destroyed, and she could get in big trouble for having abandoned her own universe, so she made sure to put a stop to this as fast as possible. Using a sound cannon that she'd stolen from another dimension, she blasted Shenron and all the other symbiotes he'd spread, collecting them up to lock them away. Clearly, both Shenron and the Carnage symbiote were too much trouble to mess with. But Astra wasn't done experimenting, she wanted to try one more. So for her final experiment, she decided to go a little bit smaller and not risk as much. Now, to be honest, I was actually surprised to see that I had the most fun with this one. I think part of it is that I really like when I do a nice long dragon and can have part of its body going back into the distance and fade it out a little bit. The first time I did that was in the second dragons episode with the Loki dragon, who is like a really long crocodile-like dragon. I had a lot of fun with that and I did that same kind of thing in this with the tail kind of coming up between the clouds and the carnage symbiote going over part of it going back across the dragon. It was just... It was really fun. I really like using the color scheme of the Carnage symbiote because it just feels so cool and menacing. And I just really liked how this dragon's head turned out. Hope y'all like it too. Here is the finished version of our Carnage Shenron. The final dragon that Astra used technically wasn't considered a dragon in its home dimension, but Astra thought that this was just semantics. It had wings and breathed fire and looked like a big lizard, so it was good enough for her. As she searched through its home dimension, she came across hundreds of creatures that all would have been fascinating to give symbiotes to. She had an overwhelming urge to copy them all, but stayed focused and simply made a note for herself that she should come back here at another time with a whole swarm of symbiotes. But finally she found what she was looking for. Astra made a copy of a Charizard and brought it to life in the Everyverse. This beast fought surprisingly well to keep the symbiote off itself, 
but after a while it was fully enveloped. The creature shifted from predominantly orange to a faded blue and purple. The flame on its tail glowed vibrant blue, and the fire that it breathed from its mouth for attacks was now swirled in a sludgy black smoke. The creature also seemed to gain new attacks. It would strike from the air, breathe fire, grab enemies to toss them to the earth, all as it had done before, but now it also had poisonous gas attacks, spewing smog at enemies to incapacitate them. It was also far less vulnerable to water, as whenever water would come near the Charizard's tail, something that could significantly damage it before, the symbiote would create a shield around the tail, and could even move the flame to another part of the Charizard's body, if need be. This experiment seemed to be one of the best successes yet, and finally satisfied Astra's creative, if a bit destructive at times, curiosity for the time being. But there was always more to try, and it wouldn't be long before Astra was once more on the hunt for more creatures to mess around with. Now it's probably obvious, but in that Shenron part at the opening, I was referring to Astra wanting to go to the universe that I've established for all the dragons I've designed on Popcross Studios. I had considered doing that for the Venomized Dragons episode, taking dragons that I've designed and venomizing them, but this felt like a better fit for a Venomized Dragons episode, taking dragons that everyone is kind of more familiar with. I'm not ruling that out as a video that won't happen, and in fact, I guess in this episode I kind of set up a Maximum Venom kind of story for that universe. And really, with this Astra character being an overseer, this opens up a lot of stories that I could do. I'm gonna make sure to stay focused because, as I've mentioned a few times on the channel lately, I have another original story that I'm currently working on. That's probably gonna come out in the next couple weeks, but then after that, maybe I'll do something with this Astra character because she seems kind of like she's sort of the worst, but in a fun kind of way. I don't know, it could be interesting. Anyway, I haven't really talked about the design of this Charizard because you can see what I'm doing. Just giving the Charizard the Venom symbiote. And doing my favorite kind of thing that I mentioned earlier where I'm having him kind of still pulling the symbiote off himself. It was a fun drawing, one that I knew I was going to do for this episode, and I hope you all like how it turned out. Venomized Charizard. Now I've got tons more dragon videos and venomizing things videos. I'll link playlists to both of those things in the description and the cards or whatever. I've done Avengers, My Hero Academia characters, Ben 10 characters, Overwatch characters as dragons. I've venomized Godzilla characters and My Hero Academia characters again. You can check out all those videos, but instead of doing my usual ending spiel, I want to take this opportunity to give a big thank you shout out to a bunch of the awesome moderators of the Popcross Community Discord. The Discord has nearly 8,000 people at this point and they do a lot of work to keep that thing running smoothly. I'm not great at Discord so they're really the ones keeping that thing going well. All of the mods that wanted to participate today have sent in a piece of artwork that I'm gonna show up on screen, along with links to their YouTube channels or Instagrams or whatever else on screen and in the description. If you like what you see from them, make sure to go give them a follow, because they're all awesome moderators and awesome artists. So huge thank you to the following people. Beanut Butter. Arrowcat. Kurt Studios. Birdwood. Breadstick. Love Bandit. Elephant. Speedscape. Crazy Chicken Animations. And of course, the godfather of the Popcross Community Discord, Cohen Calmer. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much to all of you awesome moderators, both the ones that participated in this and the ones that didn't. And of course, thanks to the whole community in general for just being a really awesome community. The Discord's linked in the description if anyone wants to join and isn't already a part of it. But that's all for today. I'm Christian Pearson. This has been Popcross Studios, home of the nerdiest art videos on YouTube. Thanks so much for watching, everybody, and I hope to see you all in the next video coming out on Monday. Goodbye.